Good morning, good morning, good night. Depends on where you are in the world. I am Sharissa Monroe Wilborn, and I am again so excited to be here with Coach Ariel and Pastor Percy on Kingdom Talk. It is a pleasure to be um, able to speak into the lives of all of those listening. And again, thank you both for having me. It is such a pleasure. I hope tonight that I'm able to share very briefly on the topic position and influence um, and hope that you hear me, hope that I'm able to invoke um, some change in your life and your mind so that you can be an even greater influencer to the world and those around you. So we're going to get started because I have a little bit of time and a lot of information to share. And um, uh, I would love to get your feedback. I would love to get your thoughts. So just put them in the chat, put them, put a comment and um, kind of let's dialogue. I want to kind of see where you're at in your, in, in, in your walk and in your purpose life. Um, so talking about position and influence today, our main scripture is going to be on Matthew 5, 13, 16. And I'm going to read it. Matthew 5, 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and, gives, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Lastly, verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that you may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And two of the big influence elements in this passage is salt and light. We are to be the salt of the earth. I'm talking we as kingdom citizens. We are to be the light of the world. Salt changes the consistency and the component and, and the... It changes anything, whether you put it in food, you put it on an animal, like you can watch it change, you can taste the change, it changes everything it touches. Light changes anything. You turn light on and darkness has to, has to run. You turn light on and even roaches have to run. You turn light on and you expose what's being hidden in the dark. And so that's what we are supposed to be in this world. So we're going to be talking about us as influencers and as, uh, as salt and as light. A very uh, good quote that I came across recently that I thought was very apropos to this, to this topic tonight by Israel Moa Ayavor. It says, never be anxious about maintaining the position you, uh, you occupy. Be anxious about maintaining your good character and you will never lose your leadership influence. So never be anxious that you occupy a position. And when I'm talking position, I'm talking about position as a title, CEO, COO, president, king. I'm talking about position as a label or the position I have as a celebrity or a famous purpose, a person or popularity, like those, that position, like never fight to maintain that, but fight to maintain a good name, a good reputation and a good character so that even with or without that position, you still maintain your influence. And it is important that we understand that because in, a, in the world that we live in, there are so many problems that we are facing. And we see that those problems are only increasing with time. They're not decreasing with time. And there are some problems that have been in the world from thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, that's just getting even greater. And we, the kingdom of God, the kingdom citizens, are continue to be at a place where it's time for us to stand. It's time for us to take a stand. It's time for us to um, use our voices, use our actions, use our gifts, use our influence to change. I think the problem with the world is that you and I have allowed so many things to sustain and maintain and occur. And like my dad, Dr. Monroe, uh, always said, like, once you tolerate something, you cannot change it. So we have just keep allowing and allowing and allowing things to happen. And then they get worse. And by the time we realize that, oh, I don't like that, or, oh, that doesn't go along with my value system and my belief system, and we have to do something about that. 
by that time, it's almost too late. So we have to get to a point where we're no longer allowing things to happen. We have to get to a point where we're no, lo no longer being a part of the problem, but we're realizing that, you know what, you and I are solutions to this problem. And to do that, we have to be different from the problem. And believe it or not, you and I are. It's taking us a long time to realize that like when that perfect, beautiful book that says we are in this world, but not of this world, that is true. We are not made of this world. We are not made to follow the cultures of this world. We have a totally different culture. It was our responsibility to be placed here and the goal of our birth and our creation to totally influence and impact this world with the world that we are from. But for as long as we transform and conform to what's happening in the world and we are allowing problems and we are part of the problems, we can no longer, we can't offer solutions. We can no longer say I want change, but yet we are part of the issue. So when you look at the many problems that are occurring in the world, like morals and values are being manipulated. Government corruption is only increasing. There are so many policies that are causing more confusion. When you think about the LGBT population and the need to want to change what sex and gender used to be and what it should be. And all of those policies are just making the world so confused. Religions are becoming more conflicting. Globalization, there's this change in ideas and ideology that's not for the good. And then all of these social misconstructs. We see racism is not, is at an all time high right now. And so therefore people are now becoming uh, governments of themselves. They're no longer addressing, they're, they're no longer respecting authority. But that is a problem. And you know what? You and I are the solutions. You and I share the solutions to some of these problems. We just have to realize that in order for me to be light, I can be darkness one day. In order for me to be salt, I can one day want to be sugar. I can't one day want to be flour. I have to be salt and then let my saltiness do what it's going to do to never become sugar, never become flour, but it's going to infect and effect the entire dough or the entire food or the entire pot. Salt by itself is salty. You can't miss it. Sometimes you can't see it because it's so small, but as soon as you add it, then you see its value as soon as you add it, then you taste its goodness. But for as long as we're sitting down doing nothing, then we're hiding our light under a bushel. We're letting our saltiness become saltless because we're not doing anything. And so there are some lies that I want to discuss or that I want to list. We're just gonna list them because I want to expose them. Because if I'm saying that you and I are the light, then let's expose some of the lies that we have accepted. Let's expose some of the myths. You don't like the word lie? No problem, it is what it is, it's called a lie. But let's expose the myths that so many people have accepted and lived their life by. So one lie, I need to be a celebrity to be influential. Another lie, I love, I have to have a position in order to be powerful. I must be famous to be influence, to influence people. My title will take me places. I will only be listened to and respected if I'm older. My title will get me before people. Another lie, position equals influence. Another myth, an influencer is someone with a solid reputation. I mean, these are things that we believe. These are fact in our lives right now. Another lie, an influence has an influencer has educational degrees. They have masters, they have doctorates, they have bachelors. Another lie is a person in position knows how to lead and manage. So those are the current myths that we have made truth in our lives, okay? So if nothing else, after this presentation for the next 20 minutes, I want to, my hope is that I can debunk and totally refute those lies and allow you to realize that you've allowed those lies to limit you, those lies to limit you. You have allowed those lies to limit your leadership. You have allowed those lies to limit your influence ability. You have allowed those lies to be limiting beliefs to you being 
the powerful person that you really, really, really are. So let's get into it. So let's talk about influence. So influence is the key to making a difference in the world and changing the world's problems that I just listed a little bit ago. So by definition, affluent influence is the capacity and ability to affect and effect your circumstances and your environment in this world. So it doesn't matter how small that change, doesn't matter how small the effect, if you can show up somewhere, if you can say something, if you can do something and you have brought about a change in the circumstances or the environment in your life or somebody else's life, you have influenced. And I'm pausing because I want you to sit there because if just by mere definition alone, that definition alone totally gets rid of all the lies that we just mentioned before. There's nothing in that definition about power. As long as I have the skill and the ability to, to affect an effect and change something in circumstances or in an environment, I, I have influence. That makes me an influential person. I don't have to be a man. I don't have to be a woman. I can be a child. I literally can be a child that can make a difference. I can be a young person. I can be a senior. I can be an average person. It doesn't matter. If I can affect an effect and bring change to a circumstance and to an environment in the world, I can influence. Now, I didn't say bring a change to a circumstance and an environment for the good or the bad. Influence can go either way. The, the, the product of your influence can go either way. The product, however, depends on you and your character and your value and what it is that you're pushing. Because the envelope that you're pushing, based on your position of influence, can change the world for the better or can change the world for the worse. And so when God created us, God's ultimate goal was for the kingdom, was to influence earth with the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of earth to be influenced by the kingdom of heaven. And so he said, you and I from heaven to earth to influence earth with that culture. That means that culture has a different language. That culture has a different policy. The culture of heaven has a different government, different set of laws. The culture of heaven has a different set of socioeconomic or social constructs, totally different from the world. So when he says, I, I sent you here from a different world to this world, you are not from it, but you are to influence it. We, as kingdom citizens, are supposed to be talking different, walking different, acting different, looking and looking different. However, there are many of us that are walking, talking, looking, and acting just like the world that we are complaining about. Or... We are talking, looking, acting, acting, and walking just like the world that we are trying to change. And let me tell you something. Unfortunately, you cannot influence the same system that you are allowing to influence you. So if you are being influenced by this world, if you are conforming to this world, then you cannot say, turn around and say, no, I'm going to influence you. No, the world is going to say, you're just like me. So we need to be different. Influence and service. You're servicing your skill. You're servicing your value. You're servicing your gifts and your abilities and your talents and your worth. You're giving of yourself for the betterment of this world and of this of, and of humanity. There's no way in there that says you have to be on any pedestal and have any title or have any label to be able to share and expose your gift and your talents and your expertise and your experience and who you are. Because experience, influence is all about who you are. It's not about what you are. I can care less if you are a CEO of a company. I can care less if you are a president of a country. If you're not able to influence me, though then allow me to influence the nation for the betterment of itself then you're not, you're not a good influencer or you're not influencing. Or maybe you have a position, but you don't have the skill to lead. You don't have the skill and the abilities to influence, but you have a very high position. It doesn't matter what you are. 
Influence is all about who you are. So let's talk about what influence is not. Influence is not manipulation, dictatorship, condescending. It's not about manipulating a system or manipulating a person or manipulating a particular, a particular kingdom market. It's not about manipulating through, uh, through corruption or through control. Influence is not control. Influence is not offensive. Because unfortunately, you can't get someone to trust you if you have offended them. You can't influence someone when you have been harsh to them and offended them. You can't influence someone where you've been so self-righteous that you've pointed out their wrongdoing or their sin. I promise you, people already know their sin. They don't need you to point it out for them. What they need you to do is show them, I can show you something better. I can show you hope in spite of your sin. But once you have offended someone, it's going to be very difficult to influence them. Influence is not volume. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to be boisterous. You don't have to have scriptures written across your head. You don't have to have Jesus written across your shirt. When you think about salt and light and yeast that wasn't included in that particular passage, all of those things act quietly. They act to the point where by the time they have done their damage, it's too late. You have no idea it's been done. That is what influence should look like. Influence should, people should not see you coming. But people should see you. They shouldn't see you coming, but they should be able to see you. They don't have to hear you. You don't have to be loud. That's not influence. Influence is not imposing. You don't have to impose who you are and what you believe in order to change someone's mind. More than likely, that, imp that imposition is going to be more of an attack. And influence is not attacking. You shouldn't have to attack in order to change. You shouldn't have to attack. When, you, when I think about light, think about light and, 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 and darkness, as soon as light comes on, like darkness disappears, there's not a moment when you turn on the light and then all of a sudden, you, for, for two seconds, you see light and dark happening and, they're not, and, then, and then all of a sudden you see light. No, like when you turn that switch on, you see light and then instantly darkness is gone. Instantly darkness is gone. When you put salt, I think about, I made some pancakes this morning and homemade pancakes from scratch. Yeah, they were amazing. And um, I put salt in the mixture of flour and sugar and baking soda or baking powder. And once I put it in, immediately it disappeared. If I wanted to extract that salt back out, that would be, it would be impossible. And it only adds for a certain amount of a, a teaspoon of salt. It disappeared. Why? Because once I added the liquid, the milk and the egg to that, it started doing its thing. And then I put that on the stove and I started to fry it and it started doing its thing. Instantly said, made no sound, disappeared. Made no noise, disappeared. Didn't input nothing. It did not attack. It just did its thing. And lastly, but most importantly, influence is not position. Please don't confuse the two. If you are in a CEO position, if you are COO, if you are famous, if you are have this status of just popularity and you're a celebrity, don't confuse that with being influential. Influence is not position. But positioning is needed for influence. Positioning is needed for influence. Positioning provides an opportunity for you to be influential. Positioning provides an opportunity for you to be influential. Position is not synonymous with what your worth is and what your value is. Don't confuse the two because your value and your worth and your talent is what makes you influential. You don't need a position to make that happen. Your position doesn't determine how significant you are. Your value determines how, how significant you are. How you use your influence determines how significant you're gonna be in making a difference in this world. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be standing on a pedestal as a COO or a CEO. You can be a young child. You can be a young person. You can be just a 
just someone in the world who said, you know what, I want to make a difference. And I'm able to do that by this gift. I don't have to be a COO. I don't have to be famous. No one really has to ever call my name, but I'm going to change your life. Position does not determine your value and your significance. Your position, however, is safe when you know who you are. When you know your value, then you can secure your position. Because guess what? When you know your value and your value becomes more important, you maintain your character and your name and your value over trying to maintain your position, your position will always be safe. But when you start focusing on, you want to hold this position. So you do all you can. You break all of your convictions and all of your personal self-governance to hold this position. You're weakening your name. You're weakening your reputation. And you're weakening your value. Eventually, that weakening is not going to be able to sustain that level of position that you have. So let's switch it. And let's increase our expertise and experience and let's increase our value let's increase who we are let's increase our in uh, our experience and learning and developing our skills and talents so that this is so valuable that they no one wants to ever let us go our position can 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 maintain can we we can sustain this high position that we may have your position provides the opportunity to earn the respect required to have a lasting influence. So when you look of, you know, how to position, remember I told you, influence is not equal position. It is all about the positioning that is needed for influence. So that means that you must position yourself. There is a positioning of yourself that you are going to have to do to put yourself in a position of influence to have a certain position of power. And it starts at the bottom. Because in order for you to have to be a leader, you are a leader because you are able to, you have a following, you're able to teach, you're able to disciple, you're able to find someone that wants to learn and say, I will teach you. But in order for you to teach, you have to have followers or students in this case that find you influential enough to want to listen. Once you are not, and because of your teaching and your, 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 your ability to express yourself, because of your ability to take your talents and your, and, 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 and your gifts and your value and teach someone else and make followers and make people who want to be students under you, then you become a teacher and then you position yourself in influence. So you can influence them. You have some, you have people listening now. You have their, their listening ear, you have their listening eyes, their listening heart, you have their watchful eyes as they want to hear and they want to see as you continue to affect and effect their lives, their circumstances, and their environment. Once you have that power of influence, that position of influence, then you now have a position of power. So now you're in a position of power because of your position of influence, because you have been willing to be a teacher to students and followers who are running after your, who are running after you and demanding your gift and demanding your value. But it starts with, are you willing to serve? Are you willing to start as a teacher? Are you willing to start with one person? I'm not, I don't care if you have five students, 5,000 students, 10,000 followers. No, I just want you. We just need one. We just need one kingdom market that's willing to say, we're going to listen to her because she's willing to teach. And as you continue to increase your skill, and you have positioned yourself in a, in, a, in, a, in, in a certain area of influence, which gives you the power. Never once did I say that now gets you to the top or that makes you the owner of the company or the CEO or, or CEO of the company. But what it does is it allows people to see your value and they automatically now want to put you in a position that you could would have never been able to fight for or get because you yourself don't think that you deserve it. 
but it doesn't matter because your value and your gift has no price. And so as people see your value and they see your worth and you're able to affect an effect and change that and they see they're going to position you which continues to further allow you to position yourself so we wanted to i want to talk about, about a few areas um that are important for you to position yourself to be in a position of influence that puts you in a position of power and it's all in the positioning of yourself. We're gonna first talk about the position of wealth. And I didn't say the position of money, because there's a difference. I said, the, I didn't even say the position of richness, but there's a position of wealth that is important to the source of your influence. Why? Because there are most markets, most kingdom markets, most people, most companies, these certain things are attractive. So you at least want to be attractive to the people that you want to serve. And a few of those ways of attraction are your position of wealth and your the, the position of your wealth, the position of your health and the, your physical health and the position of your mental health. All of that is a, is a great um, universal, and um, way of, of maintaining and putting yourself in a position of total wealth so that you are attractive to those you want to serve. Because if you're not attractive, they're not going to want to listen to you. If I'm not talking about a physical attraction, someone that takes care of them, you don't, and that varies what physical attraction is based on who you know who you are, but also who you're servicing. But you at least need to be in a place where people are going to respect you. They're going to even want to listen to you. You at least want to get them to listen to you, but you want to pull them in and you want to attract them. And the Bible talks about, you know, there being a wise man, but as though he was wise, he was poor. So because he was wise, he was wise, he had expertise, he had experience, he had gifts, but no one listened to him because he was poor. And because he was poor, he couldn't be as influential as he was. I don't want that to be you. So focus on taking care of your physical health. Focus on taking care and stabilizing your mental health. Focus on positioning yourself to not only make a certain amount of money, but also be a good steward of the money that you have. Whether you have $5,000 or whether you have $5, be a steward of that money that, that people are able to see. Look a certain way. Don't let money control you, but you make, make money a partner in what it is that you're trying to do. Position your wealth so that when people look at you, you are attractive enough that they want to listen. People won't listen if you are wise but poor. So the next positioning is position your wisdom. Educate yourself on the different markets you want to serve and then understand the concepts of that market of those people you're trying to serve. And interestingly enough, wisdom and poor don't go together. You can't be poor and be wise at the same time. The two actually contradict themselves because if you're wise in knowledge, experience, expertise, but you're still poor, that means you are not applying to your own life what it is that you are about to tell me. So you want people to be able to listen to you and then you want what you look like and you want what you sound like and you want what you exuberate from from yourself you want that to look like what it is you're teaching them so that they can say man i'm going to listen to her so seek to educate seek seek to learn the different languages and policies and the cultures of the markets and people that you want to serve and then understand the concepts that puts you way a step ahead that makes you increases your influence, your influential ability when you position yourself and position your wisdom. Thirdly, position your character. Position your name, your reputation, and then let it be solid. Let your moral compass be one that's consistent and that's solid. You're doing, not only doing what you say, 
And already doing what you do, but you're doing it all the time. You're one person all the time. Maintain a good character, like you heard in that quote initially, over maintaining your position. Maintain your name, maintain a good name. Don't, you know, there are certain cultures and certain elements of the kingdom of heaven that should be separate and different from the elements and, and, and culture of this or of, of the earth. And there should be a difference. I should not be trying to influence the earth with lies when lies is not a part of the kingdom of heaven. Then I'm not influenced. I'm not influencing anything. I'm not changing anything. The world is filled with lies. So what am I doing? I'm just adding to the problem. I'm adding to the culture. But I'm not. I'm actually allowing the culture to change me. I'm allowing this culture that I'm complaining about to actually conform me to influence me as opposed to me influencing it. So positioning your character. Fourthly, position your your relationships. Be friendly. Remember I said initially influence is not attacking. Influence is not offending. So if anything, make friends first. Make friends with the market. Make friends with people who you are trying to serve. Make friends with the unbeliever. Make friends with those that are on drugs. Make friends with those that may be in prison. Be friendly to them. Be love on people. Start there. That is where your influence starts. Why? Because that leads to our next position, position your trust. When people find you friendly, when they find you approachable, when they realize that you're willing to listen to them, listen to who they are, listen to where they are, listen to what they love. Someone loves cursing. Okay, what are you going to do about it? Doesn't mean you curse when you get around them but you don't knock them in the face every time they do. You just be silent. You just never do that. And allow them to eventually say, man, every time he or she is in my presence, I curse, she says nothing, but she never does. Maybe when I'm in her presence, I'm not going to. And then they realize that if I can do that, if I can not curse every time I'm in her presence, then I can do it in other presence of other people. And so you have said nothing. You have just been you consistently. You have maintained your character. You have been friendly and kind and loved on them no matter who they are. Therefore, you have positioned their trust to want to listen to you. Therefore, they even want to follow you. Then they want to change. You affected and affected and infected them with your culture. That is what influence does when you position yourself accordingly. And lastly, position yourself to act. And sometimes that is as simple as being present. Be present. Show up. Be present and show up. And that requires you positioning yourself because that takes a great responsibility. So it's not a simple task. It's not even a simple ask. But you must position yourself. So let's go through those positionings that makes you and positions your influence, which also positions your power. One, position your wealth. Two, position your wisdom. Three, position your character. Four, position your relationships. Five, position your trust. And six, position yourself. Be present. Show up for, for people. So I hope that as you've heard these charge to position yourself, you are no longer allowing those lies and those myths to further impede on your ability to be great and to be influential. You don't have to be 25 or 90 to influence anyone. You, you can be a 13 year old boy who can teach a 30 plus year old woman how to do something. And she totally submits to your teaching. Why? Because that's your expertise and she knows not what to do. That was a 13 year old boy and that 30 something year old woman was me. And I learned an entire dance routine following a 13 year old boy because he was teaching me and I was willing to learn. And I saw him be this great, leader because I allowed him to influence me. Be that person. You don't have to be famous to be influential. Know your value. You don't have to have all of this money 
and and fame to be to be influential. Just increase, just develop your gifts and your talents and act on them. Be present, be kind, be consistent. Position your wealth. Take care of you. Take care of your mental. Take care of your physical. Like those make you wise enough to want people to want to listen to you. And I want to see you be position yourself to be in a position of influence that puts you in a position of power because God has given all of us power and authority to be influential in this world. We should be influencing earth with the culture of heaven. So I hope tonight I have invoked if nothing else but thought and change in your thoughts that is going to bring about a new action that is going to make you the greatest influencer you are starting today. Thank you so much for listening. Again, put your comments. I'm so looking forward to hearing them and reading them and providing my own feedback. Again, thank you so much, Coach Ariel and Percy. And it's been amazing, amazing always being here with you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. God bless and I love you all.